So this is my temporary Starlink setup on top of the roof of my garage. And of course it's temporary as you can see. If you look to the right you can actually see the tools I used to clean this, which is also why it's wet. If you're wondering about the sky view from here, um, in the Starlink app there's a feature where you can check it and as you can see in the overlay it's basically perfect, right? So all the light area is where there should be no obstructions and there's almost nothing, there's just a bit of a satellite dish and a chimney which is not optimal however as I said it's just a temporary setup and if nothing works I could always just mount it where the other satellite dish is mounted right now by getting the roof mount add-on from Starlink or by getting the pipe adapter which would be perfect in this case because the other satellite dish is not needed anymore. And here you can see the email that was sent for Starlink availability in Germany, where it says that users in Germany can expect speeds from 50 Mbits per second to 150 Mbits per second. However, for me this is actually a different story, which you will see in a second. So by now my Starlink is obviously up and running. You saw the satellite dish move a couple of times and the router is also connected. And now I'm just connecting to the network. I just chose a network name and set a password and that was it, right? That's the whole setup, that's pretty cool. And now you can see I just connect to it and then I will use it for the first time now. So as you could see, I got 160 megabits per second there when I connected for the first time. But that's actually on the low end of the spectrum in terms of what I've been receiving, but I will get to speed tests in a minute. First, here I want to show you, this is a globe that shows the estimated coverage of Starlink. And as it shows in the title, I set it up in Germany and if you take a look at Germany the coverage looks pretty good as you can see the deep blue tiles are the ones which have good coverage and this is with the 35 degree angle if we change to 25 degrees which is what they are planning to do I would actually have 100% coverage as you can see the stars indicate 100% coverage. And here you can see another cool map that shows where the Starlink satellites are at the moment and you will see it a few times more in the video. I will link both of these maps in the description because I think they are pretty cool. If you want to know what the Starlink app looks like when you're connected, this is it. Pretty simple, nothing fancy, there are like stats, although I'm not too sure about them. Like the download usage sometimes says 300 me megabits per second and I'm not really sure what that means. But the cool info is something like the obstructed in the last 12 hours or the beta downtime. That's really neat. And here you can see I'm doing a speed test uh, right from the app. And this now gives me a speed of 250 megabits per second, peaking even higher. And this is what I'm consistently getting now. And now that we're talking about speeds, I think that's actually pretty incredible. I mean, if you think about it, you saw the email earlier, it said we can expect 50 to 150 and I'm getting up to 250 consistently, not only on my phone, but everywhere, which is pretty crazy. I didn't really expect it, although obviously it's still very unstable. I will get to that in a second after I show you some of the upload speeds as well. Here you can see a recording from a different machine that's actually connected via Ethernet. So on the router there is just an Ethernet port and I connected this machine uh, using just a regular old cable. And here you can also see the upload speeds. Uh, when they peak there generally the upload speeds are generally between 50 and 60 Mbits and the download speeds are between 200 and 260 megabits per second uh, download when they peak. And that's generally the speed I'm getting, right? So here you can also see I'm like switching between the map and the speed. 
I'm sometimes I looked at the map and I was wondering, okay, when these groups of satellites fly by, are the speeds better then? But to be honest, I <laughs> was not really able to observe anything there. Here it peaks at 260 again, but then stabilizes at around 240, and that's yeah, that's generally the peaks. One thing that I want to highlight here is that sometimes it drops down to 2 or 3 megabits per second. And then it picks up really fast again to regular speeds. But I want to highlight the instability here because it definitely is not perfect yet, obviously. So sometimes it, for a few seconds it just drops down. And I suspect this will be way better when there are more satellites, uh, when the minimum angle is decreased. So that's definitely the hope and that the speed increases even further. Although I'm already pretty satisfied, I've been using it for more than a day, and it's really nice. I also didn't feel the speed drops, but I could definitely see them on the speed test, so there is certainly instability in the beta test. That's why it's a beta test, right? So, I hope that I was able to entertain you, and I'm just going to give you the nice time-lapse again. Even though it's not the most fitting, I really have to say it, it's that you can learn anything, creative creator, maybe not, out.